Okay guys, so I've got a banger for you in this video. We are watching the fight involving Victor Ortiz, who was the challenger, and Andre Berto, who was the current champion. Both boxers were from the USA. In this 12 round championship contest, Berto's WBC World World to Weight title was on the line. The fight was staged in Connecticut, USA. Okay guys, thoughts and opinions at the end. Let's get straight into the action. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both you. Touch them up. Is there an exciting must-see American fighter in the house? Stay in your corner. They were contemporaries as amateurs. They never knew each other personally. Ortiz has been throwing around very menacing comments recently, quoting Mike Tyson. Berto was amused. Yeah. Both guys have come out throwing very hard punches to begin the fight. Very fast, crisp, hard punches. It, all the way around the general footwork and the punches are coming very fast in this fight. It's almost like a fast-paced amateur fight. And you know, know, how do you expect yeah. the fight to go? Well, I think Berto is going to try to win back because he's more explosive. Probably one of the most explosive fighters that I've known. But physically, I think he's still stronger even though the other guy, Ortiz, weighed in better. I think that the physical strength and maybe the mental strength probably of Berto may carry him through. But on the other hand, Berto has a reputation of being questionable in terms of his ability to take a punch. And if he's questionable in his ability to take a punch, then Victor Ortiz may well be able to exploit that. But so far in the first round, Berto is busier, and down goes Berto on a hard left hand by Ortiz. And Michael Ortega is not going to rule it a knockdown. He's going to say that Berto tripped over Ortiz's foot. Ortega immediately made the ruling. He's a good referee who's a former fighter and sees pretty well. Step back, watch ahead. From here, it looked like the punch did it, but you may be right, Jim. Uh, there could have been a trip. It wasn't we're a clean find out punch, but, replay, I hope. but it wasn't a clean punch. But normally, if you go down the result of a blow landing anywhere above the waist, and it did, even if it was a grazing blow, he blocked. He wouldn't have went down there, I'd been hit. Berto staggered again. Straight left hand by Ortiz. And Berto does go down in the corner this time. So now, Ortiz has the credit for the knockdown that he didn't get the first time around. Hey, you go, Andre Berto right. has a whole new respect right. for Victor Ortiz's right, punching go. power. And Ortiz, and Ortiz can't wait. Ortiz has come out here to prove hey, hey. that he is a fighter inside as well as outside. Head, head. Break, break. And has Let's taken go. it to Berto. I find myself surprised by that. I'm stunned. Berto pastes Ortiz with a big right hand. Ortiz walks through it. Keeps throwing. Keep Berto blocking the shot. Ortiz is trying to get rid of him right here. This would be a very interesting fight. You know, Berto was known for being in these type fights in the amateurs a lot and surviving most of them. But I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Break, break. Let him out. He's back. faced some adversity in his professional career, particularly against Luis Colazzo in a fight that a lot of people thought Colazzo might have won. Berto came behind, from behind in the late rounds to reel in Colazzo. Don't know if he's been hit with as big a shot as the left hand that put him down in the corner by Victor Ortiz. That's part of the damage. The first two punches were also part of the damage. Berto was clearly wobbly and woozy at that point. Power shots in round one. Ortiz landed 22 out of 48. But you know, Ortiz is, is, is really sharp, a little bit more crisp, but Berto, is, as I said earlier, has been in these type fights and won them a lot. He's a very, he's a lot of composure back. Yeah, very explosive. And he still has a lot, a lot of fire in him, yeah. And but I think to, he's hurt also still. We have to keep in mind that Ortiz has break, been a break. fast starter. Keep your punches in front. Keep in them the, in front. Let's his go. His loss to Maidana as well as in the draw with Peterson. Break. Let him out. Step he back. knocked break. Maidana down three times. Break. Often forgotten in light of how Maidana ultimately got the better of him physically in the fight. Berto seems to be still hurt from that uh, first round. I don't think he's fully recuperated. But he's fighting. 
and going at Ortiz from time to time. And settling into a little bit of a rhythm now in round two. Well, already, this is a better fight than the last time two American guys got into the showdown back in uh, January, Bradley and, Al uh, and Alexander. Certainly, Bradley and Alexander didn't produce anything like the fireworks we saw in the first round here. Good uppercut by Berto. Hey, let him out. Break. Step back. Ortiz is trying to land one more big right hook. Let him out. Let's go. Step back. I think it's his Break. most effective Listen punch, up, Emmanuel. Yeah, Ortiz yeah, is let's trying go. to keep his punches compact, uh, taking his time. He's trying go to land his one or two short punches. There you go, those short, but compact punches. And remember, he's another southpaw who is basically a right-hander. Berto has a look of concern in his Break. eyes, unlike anything we've seen during his that's professional that's career. Clearly, his confidence has been rocked by what Ortiz has brought in the first two rounds. It's not just his confidence, uh, Jim, it's, it's his whole state of mind coming into this fight. That he was facing an inferior Break. fight. Let him out, let him out, step back. And he can't think step that back. now. Step back, step back. He landed in, a in, terrific right hand shot in the corner, but Ortiz took it and stayed right there. That's pro that's as good a news step for back, Ortiz as the fact that he knocked him down in the first round, that he was able to take that punch the way he did. All, all of Ortiz's punches are very There's the right hand shot. again, and now Berto has a knockdown. That's an official knockdown, but it, it was probably due to balance, but still it's an official knockdown. Ortiz glove touched the canvas. Seven. It was clearly the result Eight. of the punch. Right. Right, so now, three Keep times clean. fighters have been on the canvas. Right. The first one was ruled a trip. The second are knockdowns, or the second and third are knockdowns for, respectively, Ortiz and Alberto. Berto's landing his straight right hand, and you've already seen the damage it can do. What a start. And that was the second flush right hand shot that Berto landed in that round. Power punches in the second round. Berto only 5 of 14, but two of them were those big right hands. Ortiz, 16 out of 32. So Ortiz remains the busier fighter, more willing to let his hands go, more fearless in the first couple of rounds. But Berto is starting to put his mark on the fight. Can he remember to duck from that right hand? Break, break, let him out, let him out, step back. Fox. Don't back him, don't back him. We wait to see if a boxing match will emerge from the slugfest which has taken place so far. But they're back to slugging again. But I, Berto is still never to me fully recuperated from the first round. Even though he landed the knockdown, Ortiz wasn't hurt that bad when he got up as compared to the way Berto was when he went down. Uppercut lands for Ortiz. Berto him holding him on. Let him go. Ortiz is fighting like a young man possessed. Yeah, and his punches are short punches. Left hand lands for Ortiz. Berto wobbling watch again it, as he goes it, back against the ropes. Watch your head coming inside. Watch your head. Ortiz had a big first round. He's having a big third. Berto hasn't yet seen the uppercut coming. And painted twice. Now he lands the right hand again. So you're free. Let's go. Work. Watch your head. Watch your head inside. It's going to be a war of wills in there tonight. They are testing each other. Well, this is new for Ortiz. I've saw Berto do this many times, but this is something new for Ortiz, and this will answer a lot of the questions that we have about him, about his mental toughness. Uh, this is an examination for both of them, and right now they're both passing them. And nobody knows the way this fight is going to go. Berto, another big hook by Ortiz inside. Another straight left hand lands for Ortiz. Berto keeps motioning Ortiz in as if to say, come on, come on, if you want to brawl, yeah, let's you, really brawl. But you let the guy keep throwing those punches. He's playing the numbers game. Sooner or later, something is going to land. 
I think Bruno is really still weak. His legs is not durable enough, and that's why he needs to rest on those ropes. Ortiz grinning at him, feeling it, enjoying what he's been able to do so far. And Berto alternating between looks of desperation and determination. Although Ortiz didn't get to land a whole lot of devastating clear punches, I think this right uppercut between the gloves is probably the signature punch of the entire round. Go in there, get on the feet, and listen to work. You listen, you're a fucking beast. Now show these people. Berto is, be Berto is being asked questions here he's never had to answer before. Through three rounds, Ortiz has already thrown nearly 150 power shots, landing 68 of them. That's an amazing start for him. Harold Letterman is celebrating his 25th year with HBO. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. 28, 27, two rounds to one. Vicious Victor Ortiz. Jim, I gave each guy a 10-8 round for the knockdowns in round one and two. But round three, Victor Ortiz took it to Andre Berto laying on the ropes. I mean, I agree with you. I don't know why I kept motioning him in. Because every time Berto would motion for Ortiz to come in, Ortiz would wrap him with a good shot. Anyway, two rounds to one, Victor Ortiz. Ortiz is a man on a mission tonight. Yes, he looks like he's determined, focused, and... This is the type of guy that I hate to go in a ring against with a fighter when they see that look in his eye that I will not be determined. I mean, not be lose tonight. I will not be denied. And that's the way he's fighting. Two more hard shots. Another right hook for Ortiz. Another uppercut. He's landing these punches. Plus, again, Berto motions him in. What is that? that Manuel, why is he doing that? Why is Berto is hurt still. He's still tired. He's using the ropes because he really his legs is not that straight right now. And he needs the ropes to hold him up. Hold himself up. But what's the motioning Ortiz in? Oh, that's, that's, that's a mockery thing to act like I'm not hurt. There's Muhammad Ali started that when he fought Joe Frazier. And that's something that fighters have picked up since then. But no, he's hurt and he's tired. Big left hand by Berto. Ortiz walked right through it. There you see the legs. That's why he's in the ropes, because of the legs. If Ortiz would go to the body a few times, he might finish him. But he's throwing everything upstairs. Okay, listen. Watch and I get the feeling that Berto is kind of waiting and hoping that Ortiz is going to punch himself out with all this early aggression. Well, it could happen, but it's a hard way to win, hoping the other guy punches himself out by hitting you. This time, Berto took it a little better than has been the case with Ortiz's power shots before. Were it not for his second round knockdown, Berto would be falling way behind on the scorecard. Yeah, but his legs are still weak to me. He's still leaning against the ropes for support. Still motioning Ortiz in. There's a lot of chatter in Andre Berto's corner, with Tony Morgan, the trainer, trying to talk to him, with his brother hey, talking to him head. constantly between hey, the ropes. Watch your head. The image of Ortiz coming into this fight, that he, he was more flighty than fighting. That he, he didn't have a real fighter's mentality. In four rounds, he may have destroyed that conviction that many people in the boxing world had. Ortiz is averaging 65 punches thrown per round. How will his stamina hold up? Is the move to welterweight a rejuvenation for him? Because in his previous nine fights, he's only averaging 45 punches thrown per round. So he's up the punch output by 50%, while at the same time moving up in weight and fighting presumably a stronger opponent. Well, you know, sometimes Whatever your plans are, um, what happens in the ring changes everything. And he went out to get Berto's respect in the first round and found out that he could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. 
Now he's trying Lance to go back to, to more of his back. skills. Berto Lance, a few jabs, and then they trade another <laughs> pair of big shots. Good, hard right hook inside by Ortiz. Ortiz still physically dominant into the fifth round. Ortiz testing Berto's legs once again. Berto is fighting this fight as though he just needs one punch to change it all. Well, he's been known for that a lot. You know, not in the profession, he hasn't been tested, but this is, as you said, Larry, this is a big test for Berto, too. He has never been in this type of a situation as a professional. Galazzo was a tough fight, but not with a young, aggressive guy who's punching with the accuracy and the power of Ortiz. He's never been in this situation. And look at the body that Ortiz has brought into the ring. I mean, the, the 161 pounds are one thing. Look at the, the lats, the deltoids. I mean, he is much more muscular even than the muscular Andre Berto. Yeah, it says that he should have been fighting this division probably. Like so many of the fighters are still trying to make weight all the time. But just because of opportunity to fight for a title, he went up and fought where he probably should have been fighting all the time. This was part of the mantra for Ortiz coming into the fight. And he's been a welterweight fighting in the junior welterweight division. And right now, it looks every bit to be true. See Ortiz mixing up his combinations very well. Even though Berto has had a real tight defense, he's been able to find gaps to be on the outside, coming up between the gloves, doing a very effective job of shooting short, accurate punches. If you've just tuned in, it has been blazing and thrilling so far. Victor Ortiz managed to put Andre Berto on the canvas twice in the first round. Only one was ruled a knockdown. Berto knocked Ortiz down in the second round. Ortiz strafed Berto with a lot of power shots in the third and fourth. They've settled in to box a little bit more in the fifth round, but by and large, it's still a slugfest, and the slugfest advantages have still seemed to belong to Victor Ortiz. Ortiz told us a, a kind of <laughs> peculiar story of winding up spending two weeks of a vacation on the tiny island of Jersey off the English coast. <laughs> Nobody goes there for a vacation. Maybe that's where he found this. This is the best start Berto's had in a round. No, no, no. And him. he now seems confident right. enough down, in his legs to try to fight in the center of the ring. Yeah, so he, he, let's see if he can get a fresh start in the fight. If it becomes a boxing match, Berto has faster hands. You think anything about Berto fighting one round in the last year? can be connected to this slow start for him, or is it just Ortiz? I think it's Ortiz. Ortiz is fighting with such determination and with such short, accurate punches that it's very difficult for him to see. And it's just, it, 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 just so much determination. You know, speaking of 50 Cent, who was over there with Floyd Mayweather Jr., he used to box. He was the New York Golden Gloves chef. Did you see him fight? No, I didn't see him fight, but I, I worked with him when I was training 50, I mean, uh, Eminem. He was, we were talking about that. Let him out, let him out. Glorious tradition, the Golden Gloves. Emmanuel, weren't you a national Golden Gloves step champion? Back, back. Well, yes, but he was back. in New York Golden Gloves. <laughs> Just making the distinction for you. <laughs> yeah. Down goes Ortiz on a perfect right hand shot by Berto. Second knockdown of the fight for Berto. And you can feel the fight. Changing perceptibly hey, in this right, round. Berto so, stood in the center right. of the ring, feels confident in his legs again. Now beats Ortiz the punch with the right hand. Ortiz's legs are very weak here. Yeah. This is the sixth round. It was the round that he lost to Maidana in. Can he escape now? Hard right hand by Berto. That was a spectacular shot. 
Great but Ortiz shot, was shot. held up partially by Alberto the rope. Alberto has a land one clean shot. He realized the clock is ticking out, so he's trying to get that one shot out. It's been a great round for Berto. Yep. After he was in so much trouble through the first five. His uppercut is good, too. Now Ortiz is going to... Oh, go my through. God! Unbelievable! What a fight! <laughs> George Foreman and Ron Lyle stand aside. And We've you, got an amazing slugfest hey, in Connecticut. And you can see Mike Otrego getting in position to stop the fight. And then Berto goes down. Time. Time. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. Ortiz coming in, get, didn't do anything wrong. Split second, that's what's boxing about. And he gets caught. And the same thing happens later on in the round. When he, And here we're at the end with Berto getting caught the same way. No one did anything or made any mistake. It happens. That's what makes boxing so exciting. Jaws are dropping all around this theater in Foxwoods, Connecticut. People are dumbfounded at what they're seeing. The phrase fight of the year candidate is perhaps a bit overused, but mark it down, baby. This is unreal. Power shots in six, Berto 28 of 43, Ortez 13 out of 32. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Look at you, 57, 55, four rounds to two, Victor Ortiz. You know, Jim, let's talk about round six. Both guys go down, okay? Um, the winner in a round has to get 10 points. I thought Andre Berto, for about two minutes and 45 seconds, was doing more in the round right, than Victor Ortiz. I scored a 10-9. In other words, not 10-8, but 10-9 for, uh, for Andre Berto, because I, I thought that he did a little bit more in the three minutes of action. Four rounds to two, Ortiz. Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Let him out. All right, let him out, you're holding, you're holding. Watch your head. I asked earlier if there was an American fighter in the house who was going to be must-see. Yeah. We've got two of them right now. So far. <laughs> They're earning their reputation the hard way. Let them out. Let's go. But, you know, you're looking to steal. It seems to be still so much energy and strength, in particular when I look at the Watch legs of Ortiz as compared to Brendan. So still shows to me he's got a lot more left in the tank. There have been five official knockdowns in the fight. Ortiz has been down twice. Berto has been down three times officially. He was also down another time in the first round. It was ruled a trip by referee Michael Ortega. And these are not flash knockdowns. These are not timing punches. These are huge shots which are landing for both fighters. Don't hit behind the head. Don't hit behind the head. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is what you get Mike, let him out, with let him two out. young, ambitious fighters who want to be great men in this sport. All right, so I got a little overexcited. Producer David Harmon corrects me. There are four, four. official knockdowns in the fight. Mike, let him out. I thought I remembered five, but who knows? There have been so many fireworks and so many things going on. In this type of a fight, you entirely get I'm oh, excited. Thank you. Does anybody think we've seen the last knockdown in this fight? <laughs> Not I. Not as long as they're throwing what they're throwing. Right, let him out, let him out. And you saw the wobble there by Andre Berto. Right, let him out, let him out. Step back. Right, let him out, let him out, let him out. Let him out. It sounds to me, Emmanuel Stewart, as though Tony Morgan is trying to get Andre go, Berto to box. He asked him to jab. Let's go. He tried to sit back and try to catch Ortiz covered in with one perfect shot. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be very tough because Ortiz is so determined. And it, as hurt as he was a couple of rounds back, he still came back the next round fighting with the same energy and the same spirit that he had throughout the entire fight. There are a lot of ways for a fighter to make an imprint with his skill. 
But it's really difficult, isn't it, to change a slugfest into a boxing match in yes, history? Yes, yes. Once you get in that pattern, you can't break it up. It's very, very, very difficult. Well, especially because neither one is as fresh and their legs aren't as good as they were earlier. Berto likes to say that skills pay the bills, meaning boxing is better than brawling, but he's got himself into a serious brawl tonight. And he may get more recognition, Jim, if he loses this fight than for any fight that he's won. It's amazing that the power that still, even though Berto's legs seem to be going, when he punches, he punches with still tremendous power. The slugfest continues in round eight in Connecticut. Let him out, let him out, let him out, let's go. An amazing display of tenacious, hard punching by both fighters so far, but especially by Victor Ortiz. Ortega warning Ortiz for hitting Berto in the back of the head. I think Ortega has, has, has injected himself too much into this fight. Maybe he's gotten too excited by all these knockdowns. We're not here to see him. Step back. Behind the head, watch behind the head. That seems to be Berto's favorite punch he's trying to land is to just pull a little step back when Artez comes in and shoot the right hand. Both fighters seem now excited and energized by the nature of the fight they're in. Right, let him out, let him out. Step back, box. Berto, as you mentioned, had a history of these kind of tumultuous fights in the amateurs. Of course, in the amateurs, you have headgear on. Yet. Seconds out. Hey, keep it clean, man. Keep it clean. Let's go, Fox. Of the 290 combined landed punches through the eighth round, 255 of them have been power shots. In other words, the two fighters have combined to land only 35 jabs in the entire fight. As we mentioned, the slugfest all the way. Andre Berto is settling into a little bit more of a boxing groove here in the last couple of rounds, as trainer Tony Morgan has asked him to remember that he has a good jab. Ortiz, for his part, intelligently wants to keep banging away. Come on, let's go, stop the holding. You mentioned okay, yesterday to Ortiz, Larry, that he threw very few jabs against Lamont Peterson. He landed Maybe at the two, end of the day. Yeah. Two jabs in eight and ten rounds. He he doesn't use his jab very much. It's just a a radar uh, weapon. Let him out, let him out. Let's go, let him out. That's all of them. And it's amazing at this pace that they've been fighting that they're still throwing punches with full power and all the way through. There's never been any no, lack no, no, of power no, no. in the punches. And especially Berto, which is surprising me, as tired right. as he seemed earlier, he's still punching with full power. But I noticed that Harold Letterman gave yeah. the last round to Berto. And in this round, Berto has been the busier of the two. The fact that he will throw his jab, and Ortiz is still trying to load up power punches, is giving Berto a chance to win the quiet rounds here. And fans may be surprised to see scorecards winding up fairly even toward the end of the fight, when most of the spectacle has been provided by Ortiz. Uh, I, I disagree with Harold on the last round. I have Ortiz winning comfortably. But he's not gonna lay back 
the way he did in the Peterson fight. Now let's see if he gets penalized because that's the second right. time that right. he has Stay hit Andre Berto behind the head. But Andre was holding his hand, I think, and forcing him that way. Next time you're behind the head, I'm going to take a point. Sorry, you understand that? Okay. Ortega says off. next time, not this Go time. Ortiz needs to be careful not to hit Berto behind the head again. Let him out. They're trading shots in close. It looks uh, to me as though Berto hasn't been able to pull the trigger no, as right. much as he... Yes, he's taking a little step back a halfway, but he can't throw the right hand. If he just boxes in these last three rounds, if he doesn't do something to assert himself, I'm not sure he can pull this out. No, because you know, Ortiz is still fighting with his legs, his good bounce, good spring and energy in it. And uh, he's got to try to land that right hand. Well, let's get the numerical drama from Harold Letterman. Harold, how do you have it so okay, far? Okay, Jim, you guys are all right. 86, 83, six rounds to three, Victor Ortiz. There's no question that Andre Brothers has got to do something spectacular in the last three rounds to catch up or to win this fight. Victor Ortiz, the busier guy, landed a hard shots, winning most of those the, the last four or five rounds. Andre Brothers is just, you know, not busy enough. Uh, he, he needs one big shot. He's really got to do something quite spectacular. 86, 83. Oh, oh, There's the shot. Michael Ortega discerns that Ortiz one hit Berto in the back of the head, and now he's going to take a point. I think that's a that's terrible okay. call. No, he was bending his head down. The guy was doing his punches. Tremendous break for Berto. I Get some one point closer on the card. That's the second break Berto has gotten, including the knock, the second knockdown earlier in the fight. You good? You sure you got time? Let and me know giving Berto this time is another break. You good? Okay. Go, time in. Break, break. Let him go. All right, listen, you're holding, okay? Now our ticket tells Berto he's holding. Break, break. Break, step back. I do like the way he breaks them up quickly and doesn't let those clinches go on. And now Ortiz seems motivated to try to put the power imprint back on the fight, having had a point taken away. This no doubt is the motivation to try to make the round an even round now that you give away a point. Ortiz needs to be certain that he doesn't get too reckless here and walk into another right hand from Berto. Yes, Berto was still punching with full power. But he is determined to not let happen what happened in the Peterson fight, where he thought he was winning and all he had to do was box for four or five rounds. It's a mark of how weak Berto's legs are. Very difficult for him to pick himself up. Let's go. Break, step back, step back. Watch and if his legs are that badly weak, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, maybe he's not punching at full power anymore. No, he still punches with full power. Let him out, let him out. Strength fighter. Let's go. Let's Very go unusual, man. We should remind everybody. Good left hand by Ortiz. That Berto is ranked only behind Pacquiao and Mayweather in the welterweight division. And that this is the first Looks fight. Looks like there's a new welterweight in town, and his name is Victor Ortiz. And this is the first fight Ortiz has ever fought at this weight. Watch That's right. Inside. Watch your head. Fighting like a man possessed against Break. Andre Break Berto. Back. Let's go. Down. What's going to do it, okay? Here you see where the point was deducted from Ortiz when he threw a left hand and miss. Berto went down, trying to avoid punch, which he should, and here he's hitting him back. And it just one of those situations where I would not have taken a point myself if I was a referee. You know, that brings up an interesting discussion, meaning when would you take a point if the guy gets hit in the back of the head? Because you know, if the guy was down holding his head and you purposely, purposely hit him, that was in the Let's midst go. of throwing an exchange of punches. Power shots in the 10th round, Ortiz doubling Berto, 22 out of 54, to 12 out of 31 for Berto. And Ortiz succeeded in evening the round despite having lost the point because of hitting behind the head. Now 
was his mission clearly after the referee's ruling, and he got it done. At least on Harold Letterman's part. Fight. Let him out. The back. Befitting his status, Berto is a overwhelming favorite to retain his title. Right now, before we know what happens for the next five minutes of this fight, he could be an ex-champion. Be careful, that was close, behind the head. Up, Ortiz has done much better work to the body, Emmanuel. Yes, he's, he's doing everything perfectly. Just, like, he doesn't. If, if, if even though he would go in and then take a step back, he would be better because they keep colliding. They're going, they're going right together. If he would just move forward and then pull back for a minute and have Berto off balance. Berto looks really out of it right now. This is the way Berto looked in rounds one and two, when he couldn't hold off the charging Ortiz and wound up against the ropes, trying to help, or trying to get the ropes to help him stand up. Referee looks like he, he would stop the fight if Ortiz would land another And Ortiz is doing points. just what he should. He's working that right up a cut, right up through the center. Berto glanced at his corner. He's looking at the corner, he's been an looking odd at look. And he's looking at the clock a lot often too on the wall over here. I've been watching him for the last four rounds. A minute still to go in the eleventh round, and Ortiz is having his way again. <laughs> Berto trying to change the fight with one big right hand. Hey, let him out, let him out. Go. Step back, step back, step back. Step back, step back. Ortiz is going to make a lot of fans with this performance. Fans love sluggers, and he's fighting like a full on slugger. Well, they promoted him a little too early as the next Oscar before the Maidana fight. The next Mexican American who would be a big box office attraction. It's taken him this long to come back. But he's grown and into fulfill his promise back, through 11 rounds. Back, back. But he's grown into his boxing manhood tonight. 11 rounds in the books. And Victor Ortiz is on the threshold of a stunning upset, which will totally refurbish his image in the sport. Well, I think Tony Morgan has the right idea. He's asking Andre Berto to knock Ortiz out. Berto only threw 19 punches in the 11th round. Danny Garcia has been largely a cheerleader throughout the fight for his fighter, Victor Ortiz. And that's pretty much all he's had to do because Victor has been bringing it in every single round. Well, sportsman like hug to begin the 12th. Ortiz yeah. right now, I think, is the welterweight champion of the WBC. Question is, can he hold it for one more round? You know, to, to tell your fighter that he's up by five points or a major margin like that, I would not do that. That's the, that's the choice of the uh, corner, What should but I Ortiz do be doing now? I would just tell him, just listen, you got to fight one. You know, don't take any chances, but still keep fighting the fight you're doing. I don't know, I don't doing, know if he fighting. knows how to fight without taking chances. At this point, Emmanuel, he has, he has created for himself a style which is about risk. And he just got hit with two big shots by Andre Berto, or right and the left, and that's why he's holding on right now. Berto had a moment. I think it surprised a lot of people, most of all, how well he's taken some of Ortiz's big punches, even though he went down twice. Another big left hand for Ortiz. Berto eating that shot the way he has eaten them all night long. Step minute back, and a half back, to go. Step back, step back. 90 seconds left for Berto to try to rescue his oh, they're not, they're not. position in the welterweight division. Break. 
Careful on the back, please. Careful. Victor Ortiz has a wonderful smile. He has a magical backstory. There were some in the past several months who wondered whether he really had the commitment, the soul, the heart of a fighter. No one will question his heart after tonight. No will I question Bruno neither. Step back, step back. It's been a courageous show by both fighters. The stock of both fighters went up. But if the stock of both fighters went up, the stock of Ortiz skyrockets step back, step back. <laughs> to another stratosphere. And fans will not be able to wait to see him back in the ring. Step back, step back. This was excitement. This was war. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and new WBC Welterweight Champion of the World. Wow, that fight was bad. Rich and full of flavor. Mwah. Guys, where to begin? So, we saw a series of knockdowns in the first round. Ortiz scored a knockdown. In the second, Berto scored one. Ortiz took the momentum of the fight from then on. In round six, as we saw, Berto seemed to find a second wave of energy to fuel himself and managed to find a powerful knockdown that caught Ortiz by surprise. Now, Berto put all of his effort in trying to finish the fight in that round and he was relatively successful in landing a few more punches to achieve this. However, his work was not as clean as he would have liked it to be and needed it to be. Ortiz managed to strike back and put Berto on the canvas just before the close of that round. This is another reason, guys, why you have to give full props to boxers such as Crawford. When you watch how he closes the fight, everything is very much calculated, efficient, and precise. Now, one thing I noticed about Berto is that he had good reactions with his hands, but he did not have the same reaction or execution with his feet. Throughout the fight, you could notice on several occasions where Ortiz approached Berto to land a body shot. Berto seldom reacted with his feet to retreat from the danger. Now, his stance was slightly wide, so this could have cause limitations in his mobility. Now, the other reason I believe is that Berto looks considerably top heavy. His torso looks quite muscular and when comparing to his legs, he looks slightly out of proportion. So mobility might be more of a burden for him than say other boxers who have a more balanced muscular um, torso to leg ratio. Now, when I look at Ortiz, he kept his lead hand back close to his face, you know, both hands in this type of position. He was never going to be first with his lead hand. So he was tailor-made for a pure boxer to beat him. Now, because of the withdrawn lead hand position, this meant that Ortiz had to use his feet to close the distance whilst jabbing. So this subsequently meant that Ortiz was also susceptible to counter punching on his approach. So the alternative is to use your lead hand from far to create havoc, confusion and distractions in your opponent's defense and then use this as a way to commit your attacking advances when there is less risk. This is the primary purpose of the jab and a versatile lead hand. All in all though, I believe Ortiz deserved the win. He showed so much determination, energy and aggression towards securing the victory and this ultimately ended up with him outworking Berto. Anyway guys, that's all for now. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please remember to smash the like button if you have enjoyed watching this particular update. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section if you want to add anything about Victor Ortiz or Andre Berto. So until my next one, peace out.